Welcome back YouTube to another episode. Today we're doing carburetor tuning on this 1980s Camaro. Since we live at 6,000 feet here, uh, the air density is a lot lower and these factory Edelbrocks come tuned for pretty much sea level. So this Camaro here is running in the high 10s to low 11 AFR, which is very, very rich. So we got a combination of jets and metering rods and a rebuild kit just to make sure, you know, if a gasket gets ripped, we can replace it, right? But I'm just going to replace all of them and check the the bowl floats and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're just going to go through, do a full rebuild. At the same time, we're changing the jets and the metering rods. And then I'm going to use my specialty tool to verify the AFRs after I do this. And hopefully the customer has a lot better gas mileage, better power, better response, better everything. So I'm going to go through this step by step with you. And uh, hopefully you can do this at home. The tool I'm using to verify everything is the Innovate LM2, the handheld unit. You just uh, plug it into your cigarette lighter and you weld in an O2 bong and it just shows you what's happening. And with this scenario, it makes it real easy on any old car to see your AFRs without adding gauges to the dash and keeping everything stock except for a bung and the exhaust. First step you're gonna do is remove your air filter, which usually is just a wing nut with a threaded rod. I just pulled the threaded rod out as well. Then we're gonna remove all the vacuum lines and the fuel line from the back here. And then you're gonna just unclip the linkages from the cable side. You're gonna leave all the linkages bolted together. Very first step in tearing this down will be Taking the metering rods with the springs out, setting that off to the side. So you're going to need a T15 right here, like so. And you just loosen this bolt and then slide the cover out of the way and then pull the metering rod out with the spring. Just like so. Slid the door out of the way. And you grab this, sort of just give it a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There is the metering rod, and then the spring is right in here. I'm just going to pull that out, set it off to the side. And I'm going to lay this stuff out <clears throat> in the orientation I removed it from facing the front of the carb, like so. Remove this tiny clip that holds the electric choke or manual choke to this bar here. You're gonna remove that. There's a little clip on the throttle side, super tiny. You're gonna use a tiny needle nose plier or flathead screwdriver, remove that. And then this rod here will come out of here. Next step for me is gonna be loosening all of the bolts that hold the top to the bottom of the carburetor with a T. 25 Torx bit. Use a flathead to remove this pin that holds this onto the accelerator pump. I took out all these bolts going around. So now with the choke linkage off and the linkage on this side off, we can just grab the top section Pull it off like so. We're going to set this off to the side, upside down, so we don't bend the floats. We don't want to bend the floats. And now we're going to get in here. The accelerator on this car was leaking, so we're going to replace the seals on that. I'll leave that as a whole unit right now. Um, but we're going to go through, replace our jets with the smaller jets. With the front of the carb facing me, I'm going to remove the primary and secondary venturi assemblies um, so I can just clean them with brake cleaner 
and replace the little gaskets that are underneath with brand new gaskets so we're not leaking any fuel. Next I'm going to pull off this little guy here because there's also a gasket that goes under this one and that is a smaller Torx bit. That one is actually a T20. Your primary jets are these ones in the front. Your secondary jets are these ones in the back by these little walls. And you got one on each side. You're going to remove the jets with a standard small flathead like this guy right here. So the stock um, jets, the primary jets are 98 thousandths. We're going to 92 thousandths, which is 1425 on the primary. Secondary jets are 95 thousandths, and we are going down to 89 thousandths, which is a 1424 jet. We're going to start off in the front now. Put this little gasket here with the flat part over here. You're going to grab that tiny little ball. You're going to drop that in this hole. Into this top hole. Then you're going to grab this weight here. That guy. You're going to drop that guy in the hole. Boop. And then you're going to grab this which is what you just removed off of it. And you're going to hand start these bolts. And then you're gonna just do it nice and snug. Now we're gonna do these Venturis one by one. You're gonna pull off the gasket, replace it with the new gasket, and then snug them in. Now that I have all of these back in tight, um, jets are in tight. This piece is in nice and tight. I'm going to rebuild the accelerator pump here. So I'm just going to grab all the new parts that go along with it and uh, just replace them one by one. So first things first, the big spring goes in the hole. Now I need to replace the seal that goes here with this seal. place <clears throat> after putting this spring inside here you replace this seal with a new seal and then you're just gonna slide this guy in to where it, this centerpiece fits in that spring and then you're just gonna leave it like that now we're gonna move on to the top part and rebuild that and then we just sandwich it all back together this gasket here has been leaking on this guy's car, so it's a good thing we bought the rebuild kit. But first thing we're going to do here is get these floats out. So you just slide this pin out. Do it like that. <clears throat> I have the front here, so I'm doing it the same way. So I'm going to set them so they go back in the same exact spots they were in. Like so. And now we're going to replace these parts here with these here. So <clears throat> there should be two sets, same part numbers. These two are going to be the same exact thing. And we're going to replace these items and then put the new gasket, put the floats back. I'm going to pull these little pins out of here, both sides. Then you're going to find the largest flathead you have. And there's two grooves, and you're going to unscrew these guys, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey style. And then we can get to the filter underneath. You're going to grab the new stuff. You're going to stack them, put the filter in, put the little washer through the threads. And then you're going to start this by hand. And you're going to thread it in as far as possible by hand. 
before you tighten it down with the big screwdriver you used to pull them out. We got these new pieces in now, nice and snug. Next step is putting the new gasket. So you want to get it around there, get it around there, make sure it's pressed down everywhere. Don't worry about if it's curled like mine is. When you compress it all, it'll seal, no big problemos. For the float adjustment, you want the gasket to be on, and then you want a 7 16 drill bit. And what you're going to do is get it to where it's right on the end, like that, and it should just barely touch. So when you have it underneath, it should just, you hear that? So you want to do that on both sides. Now you're going to hold it this way and you should measure 15 sixteenths from the top of the bowl to where you measured it before. The same, the same type of measurement you did with the drill bit, but it should be 15 sixteenths this way. And then if it's not, there's a little metal tab on the back. You're going to bend that metal tab so that it stops where at 15 sixteenths. My floats were hanging down too far, so I used the end of the 7 sixteenths to bend the little tab back here. And then I used calipers, and I locked it down to 0.9375, which is 15 sixteenths. And then I used that to measure and check the distance. So now we're good. Um, next step is going to be to go ahead and restack everything. Restack the lid, make sure the accelerator pump goes through and it's nice and smooth. Put all these screws in, a few threads to make sure all the holes line up. And then you're going to run them down slowly. Get one to touch and get the next one to touch. Do not just like torque down one of them. So like get it down like so, go to the next one. Go to the next one, go to the next one, all the way around. All the top is torqued down. So now let's put the choke back on here and put the little clip in to hold the rod in place. Then put the linkage back with a little clip. With this combo, we're switching to a 7047 metering rod, which is a 1451. The factory one is a 7547. <clears throat> so all we do is push this little springy thing, slide the metering rod out. I'm going to use the new springs that are there. Um, and then just slide the new metering valves or metering rods in. Pretty simple. You're going to put the little spring down in the hole. I know it's hard to see, but you put that there. That will go inside this cup. You're going to take the metering rod, put it to the side, there's a little hole, and then you make sure that when you're putting this in, you wiggle it so that that spring goes inside the cup and it should be springy. See that? Make sure it's nice and springy like that. Then you're going to push, hold it down, and then you're going to hold this door nice and flush, tighten down this screw. At this point, everything is all tightened back together. <clears throat> I ran in the idle set screws all the way, and we're going to turn them out three turns from dead stop. And you spin them out three full turns is a good starter point. Um, so now we're at the point where we're just going to put this thing back in the cars, hook up the stuff, hook up the fuel, hook up the vacuum on the back. And then um, get to fine tuning it with the idle, the idle set screws to get the AFR right, and just overall see how this thing drives. We got good news, we got bad news. Good news starts, no gas, just starts. Awesome. Cruising, AFRs look good. 
the bad thing is wide open throttle still way too rich it's like 11 11.2 11.4 um to one which is way way too rich for naturally aspirated motor especially this old chevy 305 or 350 whichever one it is we need to be more in the roundabout area like 12 8 13 12 8 somewhere in there so uh it's a weekend shops are closed so i'm gonna go buy the next two smaller secondary jets and then uh i'm just gonna have to open the carb swap the secondary jets test it and hopefully it's good if not then i gotta do the second set so after swapping the uh jets again 83 thousands was the jet we used for the secondaries and it was good at wide open throttle so if you're up in the mountains like me then that's what you need 83 thousands secondaries um also for the accelerator pump you have the three holes put it on the very top hole so it shoots the least amount of fuel and that will help when you tip in it doesn't go too rich on tip in so hopefully this video helped you out you're gonna need an o2 reader you know obviously if you want to get accurate for your altitude but we're at 5 5200 to 6000 feet depending on where we're driving come check out the next videos and i'll see you next time wrench on